Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Underrail Expedition with me, Bring It Dawn. Soft camera actually ended up making a new character with one change. Everything about him is the same except for I moved the points that had electronics down to tailoring. Uh, there's a commenter nice enough to let me know that the armor that I intend on using or crafting later on requires tailoring and mechanics, not just uh, mechanics like I thought. So again, I'm not an expert in the game. I know some of the ins and outs, but definitely not all of them. Um, and then I had some questions about feats and attributes. Uh, so my primary objective is to get my strength to 11 so I can use the iron grip feat, which allows me to use a spear and a shield at the same time. Uh, after that, I am gonna focus on getting my dexterity up to five so that I can use the other spear feats. Uh, I think two or three of the spear feats require five dexterity. Uh, every four levels, I get a point that I can allocate into one of these. So uh, my focus, again, 11 strength and then 5 dexterity. So that's got me covered until level 12. Uh, past that, I'll probably focus on like strength. Um, I know I mentioned a feat that required 6 intelligence. I'm not, uh, I'm not very concerned about that. I'm not going to think that far ahead right now. I probably won't be getting Weaponsmith. That was on my maybe list of feats. Alright, let's get the tutorial started. Uh, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Great. I pick up your weapons and armor from the cabinet. I think there's also a few EMPs left on the shelf as well. So, you didn't hold tab. Okay. I'm not going to read the, uh, the, t the tutorial dialogue. Because I'm not super concerned about it. Plus, it's for me. Uh, there will be three bots fighting against you, just like the first time. So choose an appropriate weapon and make sure you wear that armor. There was this guy a few years ago who forgot to put on his armor his armor on and well it didn't end well take those bots out okay I know how to do all that I'll uh, ring me when you're ready to proceed or if you have any questions understood all right some EMP grenades fantastic pistol ammo crossbow bolts knife hammer and insulated vest oh 200 percent against bullets and shotgun shells That, that. I mean, the pistol is the pistol loaded. There's a better way to do this. You can hit shift, right? Oh, sorry, it's in process. There we go. All right, let's talk to him on the intercom. I'm here. Uh, got any combat tips for me? Always be prepared and fight smart. Brute force will only get you so far. Uh oh. Brute force is kind of the, uh... The butter to my bread, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, turn-based initiative determines who goes first unless you initiate combat. Yep, know all about that. Hey, Vensel, what weapons should I use against bots? Technically, you can use whatever you feel suits you the best, but as you know, bots in general are pretty well armored. Knives might work if you want to slash rat hounds, but against bots you better use something like high caliber or armor piercing bullets, uh, explosives or even sledgehammers rather than say GHP rounds and bolts. Those ain't going to work as well. Now EMP weapons are best if you want to do some serious damage or even short circuit bots. These don't work so well against living enemies unless you want to drain someone's energy shield for example. But what about armor? Well, armor is good for you, he laughs. When it comes to armor, there's always a trade-off between protection and mobility. For example, wearing metal armor makes you less agile but offers more protection, while with, say, leather armor you get the opposite. Less protection but more mobility. Of course, there's more to armor than just these two extremes, but you get the general idea, I hope. I wanted to read, you know, what do you mean by short-circuiting bots? An EMP blast will temporarily take out any bots it hits. Now that after some time they will power on again, and will be immune to EMP for a short period of time. It's some funky defense mechanism. I think it was Harold who already explained that to me, but I wasn't paying enough attention. And what are some ways for me to temporarily disable my enemies? There's loads of ways one can deal with his opponents. Some you can incapacitate by flashbangs, others you can stun with electrical weapons. Uh, you can use traps, or if you're good with uh, psionics, you can even mess with people's heads. Just remember that what you can do to others, they can also do to you. 
Alright, um, how do I use my weapons and devices more effectively? I uh, keep important items where they're easy to access. Yeah, so the action bar. How do I reload my weapon? This is a funny dialogue option. <laughs> really? <laughs> I've already showed you how to reload. Um, if you have it equipped, you can hold shift to reload it. Alright, open the gate. I didn't equip my AMP grenades. Whoopsies. Um, yeah, I'll just run them down. Sucker. All done. Good job, Bron Don. Now I want you to pick up the items from that locker. There should be a battery, a hacksaw, and two lockpicks inside. He yawns. Use the lockpick to unlock the door. In the next room, you will have to unlock the foot locker as well as that box before I let you through. Okay. So this requires what? Lock picking up one. So two lockpicks, supercharged lithium cell for the hacksaw, I assume. All right, let's go ahead and put these on our action bar here. All right. Click on that. Click on this. And boom. Good, good. Now for the final room. Here you've got one sentry bot and a camera. Try to sneak around the bot if you can. This one will not shut down after one hit, just to let you know. Enter stealth mode, yada yada. By the way, the camera you can, can see no matter how good you think you're hiding, so it'd be best if you're able to avoid its line of sight completely. A tactical vest might not be the most appropriate thing for sneaking, but it'll do for now. Alright, so enter stealth here. I didn't see the camera there, so... No, oops. I'll bring it on, sentry bot. This is how most of the game is gonna go anyway. I'm gonna try to sneak, and it's gonna fail. It's gonna turn into this.
Stop looking at me, camera. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Alright, we did okay. Not sneaky. Well done, Brondon. Hope you're satisfied now. He yawns. Will my performance on this run affect my overall results? Nope. Alright, I'm done here. It's time to check out my new room. I have no doubt you'll like it. I have yet to see any newcomers complain. He laughs. Continue. Oh. Nothing more to say than congratulations again, Brondon. And welcome to Southgate Station. Go and get some rest. Alright, see you around, Benzel. Alright, here's our room. This colorful mosaic doesn't seem to represent anything in particular. Broken pixel. The hanged rat. What could it mean? Some flares, a patching kit, mechanical repair kit, and rat hound leather armor. Compass, some credits, and private quarters key. Personal computer, security scope, Brondon personal. Access level full. Personal messages. Uh, read a message key card from Wayne. Hi, I just fixed your door so the key card should work fine now. If you haven't found it yet, the key card should be in your desk. See you around. A welcome from Tanner. Uh, congratulations. You have passed all the tests we presented you in the past weeks and have now attained full citizenship at Southgate Station. On behalf of the entire community, I welcome you into our fold. Visit me in my office in the comms room as soon as you've rested so we can discuss your duties in the coming days. Okay. Miss anything? No. Now one thing I do have a problem with in this game is I keep trying to use WASD to move, which is obviously not the... Uh, the way to go about that. Yeah, I'm not going to try and break into anybody's rooms. And I'm going to waste all of their electricity. So if you look at the map, this is how it works. It's a. Uh, I like it. I like how their their maps work. I think it's pretty straightforward. Is it administration and library? This is where we're at now, right? We're on level one. Uh, we're in private quarters. Alright, so yeah, administration is where we need to go. No, we need to go see Tanner at the Commons and Cantina. So let's go do that first. I saw office in the other description. I was like, oh, that's where I need to go. It is not. Hello? It's Pencil. Did I tell you that one about the dude who did the range completely trunk? You did not. Jack Quicksilver, what a name. Uh, let's talk to Ethan. Before you is a handsome young man whose attire portrays him as someone who prefers charm over harm. Whether his looks deceive or not, though, is a question that is yet to be answered. In his hand, a glass of fizzy water, he calmly addresses you. May I help you? Uh, who are you? Who wants to know? Uh, Bron Don. I've recently moved to the station. Good, good. You may call me Ethan. What can I do for you? 
Uh, anything interesting going on? Not much, unfortunately. The cave-ins have us all trapped in here, so like a lot of the people, I'm waiting for the tracks to get cleared before I can move on. But it's not much of a problem. I've always liked this place. So you're the traveling type. Takes a sip of his fizzy water. Yeah, let's just say I travel a lot. Uh, what do you think of the Southgate Station? I've been here before many times and will return again if time allows. There are places where more fun can be had. Nothing tops Core City in that regard, at least not in the South Underrail. But Southgate Station is a place which I find most relaxing. It is a safe, well-defended station with civilized citizens. The earthquake sort of forced me to stay here, but I don't mind. Moreover, I'd rather be stuck here than at some low-life infested bar worrying whether someone is going to try- whether someone is going to stab me in the back. Uh, where will you be going after the rocks have been cleared? I'm thinking Core City. City. Probably Core City. But the life of a traveler is an unpredictable one. And why are you drinking fizzy water? Water is the best drink. The fizz simply makes it a bit more interesting. No other reason. Alright. What's up, Jack? I haven't seen you around here before. You stuck in this hole now as well? Uh... Yeah, who wants to know? Don't answer a question with a question. It's irritating. Name's Jack Quicksilver. Who are you? My name is Braun Don. He just nods in confirmation. Uh, where are you from, Jack? I'm not a citizen of any place, if that's what you're asking. I travel around a lot, but when I'm not on a train, I spend most of my time in Core City. And what brought you here in the first place? A lucrative business opportunity, but it slipped past me, unfortunately. Uh, what do you do for a living? Are you a trader? Among other things, yeah. Are you looking to trade? Yeah, show me what you got. Now, I have a couple hundred... monies. And there are different currency types depending on the location that you are in. I probably don't need to buy anything right now. Though I have thought about... Oh, intimidation has increased by 5. I was thinking about grabbing, oh, where's it at? Some lockpicks. But I know that he has them, so I don't need to buy them right now. I think there's something else we could say. Yeah, what happened with that business opportunity? It's a business secret. If you're interested in doing some work, though, that's something I can arrange. Uh, what kind of work? Package delivery. I'll pay you an SGS credits, 100 pieces. Okay, give me. Uh, tell me the details. He beckons you closer. You know where the GMS warehouse block is? No. Never mind then. Ah, fine. Okay. Yes, I know where it's at. First, you go to the bar the barracks at the station platform here in SGS. This key will open one of the foot lockers, and the package will be inside. He hands you the key. Take the package to the warehouse block to the building just south of the GMS compound. A man will be waiting for the package there, and you'll get your money. Why don't you just take the package yourself? No questions. We'll not speak of this again until the job is done. Okay, let's go talk to Arlene. If it doesn't count as stealing. Alright, those do. You met Arlene during your testing period. She's in charge of food preparation and rationing. Huh, we used to make fun of Tanner's stupidly high standards when admitting new people. Not the end of the world if we get someone imperfect, we said. And here you are, bringing us earthquakes on day one. Very funny, Arlene. I was only kidding. Don't take it too seriously. Anyway, what do you need? Who's that dandy over there? <laughs> over there? That's Ethan Lanford. Uh, what can you tell me about him? He's a handsome man. Man, <laughs> Comes to SGS from time to time. Always dressed as sharp as a razor. He's always flirting with the ladies. No exceptions. I've seen him entertain quite a number of them. Well, myself included, with some unusual psionic tricks. Tricks? Well, he's a... what you call it? A temporal manipulator. It's one of those psi abilities, but the thing he does I've never seen anyone else do before. He can manipulate time, but only for specific objects, like slowing down a fly so it moves its wings in slow motion. Or making things hover in air. That sort of stuff. 
It's all parlor tricks. Fun and unusual. Good to attract the ladies. His good looks and charisma make him make them stick around, though. That's his real magic. Mm. <laughs> uh, know anything else about him? Where he's from? What does he do? Not much. He's talkative, but reveals little about himself, when you think about it. No one knows where he's from or what he does. He usually comes alone. Maybe leaves with a girl. Maybe not. Depends. Always drinks fizzy water. Yes. Has that temporal manipulation thing going for him. And that's all I know, really. Oh yeah, dresses as sharp as... Oh wait, I said that already. Uh, so what else is new besides the earthquake? Or, or how bad... So how bad was it, the earthquake? For us, not that bad. The south tunnel collapsed, so the train is out for a while. The station itself didn't suffer any major damage, as far as I know. I heard it's much worse up north. Something about a Union's freighter crashing and getting buried on a side rail near Core City? Man, I can already imagine all the vermin crawling out of their holes to take a bite of take a bite of that cake. And I'm not talking about rat hounds. Uh, so what else is new besides the earthquake? Gorsi's gathering up his squad. Don't know what they're up to, but they're armed. Uh, got any rumors? There's been very little pirate activity lately. The Black Gills seem to be doing a darn fine job. Uh, Harlan and me told me he started seeing more and more lurkers near the underpassage. Underpassage's exit. Apparently, the free drones are becoming more and more active in South Underrail. Some even say they have a hideout in Junkyard. Okay, that's enough uh, rumors for now. Did I barter with her? What does she have? Stuff. Okay. Oh, keep doing that. I'm trying to use WASD to move the map. Or, yeah. Alright, barrels, what do you got? Nothing. Okay. of Hadrian. The man behind the desk is Hadrian Tanner, the counselor who admitted you into Southgate Station. Even during your first encounter with him, he struck you as an unusual looking individual. Setting aside his impressive stature, one finds it difficult not to notice how his thick, bushy hair and beard envelop most of his head. That, in addition to his opaque glasses covering his eyes, which you've never noticed him without, means that you can see very little of his face and its expression. His somewhat dirty scavenger outfit, which he wore earlier as well, clashes with the clean, finely furnished office, suggesting that Tanner probably does most of his work in the field. As soon as he finishes typing, he raises his head and reaches out to shake your hand. His big hand, tucked into dark brown gloves, makes yours seem like that of a child in comparison, and you especially feel his large fingers to be twice as thick as yours. His deep voice feels distant and calming when he addresses you. Congratulations once again, Brondon, and welcome to our small community. You scored very well on, on our test, no small feat that. I'm sure you'll turn out to be a valuable and respected citizen, but more importantly, I hope you'll find peace and kinship here, which are so hard to come by in the chaos surrounding us. Uh, I'll try my best not to disappoint. That is good to hear. I hope the earthquake didn't disturb you much and you were able to rest a bit from all the testing, for you have much work to do today. Events have transpired that require your attention. Are you ready for some field work? Uh, ready and able, so what's up? How much damage did the earthquake cause? Not much damage to the station itself. There were no casualties, fortunately. Regardless, the railroad tunnel was caved in, so we're cut off until the rubble has been cleared up. It is nothing that you should be concerning yourself with at this point in time. Now back to the business at hand. First, you can have your weapon back. Lucas of the Armory should have it. 
And while you're there, you might want to drop by the shooting range, since you'll be doing some field work today. It might not be a bad idea to warm up in case things get ugly. I'll speak to Gorski if he's there. He'll help you set up for some practice sessions. However, that is entirely up to you. Uh... Understood. And what is this field work you mentioned? Down in the tunnels below our station, just to the north of the crossroad caves, lies a series of abandoned outposts. These outposts were built by another station a long while ago for the purpose of scouting and defense. In time, they fell to decay. I want you to retake them so they might once again serve the same purpose. However, in order to do so, you will need to activate the main power generator that's located inside one of them. Harold from the engineering sector thinks he knows how to get the generator operational, so he should be your first stop after we are done here. As far as I am aware, there are a total of five outposts plus the one with the generator. I don't know if it's possible to activate all of them, but try to activate at least three. You may also want to talk to Jonas at the Crossroad Watch Post. It's down in the tunnels outside the station. You'll be passing through there anyway. He's one of our most experienced scavengers, and he's probably seen more of South Underrail than any of us here. He'll surely have some useful advice for you. Uh, why, are we re why are we retaking these outposts? It's an important strategic position should certain factions attempt to encroach further into our zone of control. Besides, cleaning them out will also push some of the unwanted wildlife further away from SGS, so it is also beneficial in that regard. Uh, wildlife. I understand that a few packs of rat hounds moved into the area, but you best talk to Jonas regarding that. He'll have more details. He knows that area inside out. Alright, I'll be off then. Oh, and one more thing before you go. Pascal, our station's chief physician, wanted to see you, so you should probably pop down to his office in the medical sector when you have the time. Sorry, what is that on the ground? Oh, it's not important, I'm sure. Okay. So a few objectives. So I'm going to try and get the package for the, uh, for this first. Why, what's up, Essie? A willowy woman removes her respirator as you approach to exhibit the smile beneath. Remember talking to her the first time you came here, and for some reason her name eludes you at the moment, if she even mentioned it at all. Her light soprano voice is quick to remind you, though. Hi, Brondon. Remember me? Essie? Essie! She laughs. Yes, that is my name. How's it going? Uh... Ah, uh, good. Well, you've been admitted to the station, so I reckon it can't be bad, right? Right? Continue. Uh, so you need some help. Directions to be a bit more specific? Uh, yes. I was hoping you'd tell me how to get somewhere. Sure, where are you headed? Never mind, I just remembered I have to do something else first. Okay. So is that where I need to get inside of? Let me check my notes again. Near the tunnel and take it to the warehouse. Near the tunnel. So maybe it's over there? No. Maybe it is that room. I'm not sure. I can't cross? Okay. Let me check this again. Free the package from the barracks at SGS plat. Where are the. Did I miss it? So I don't see barracks up here. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I just can't do it yet. Uh, so medical wanted to see me, so let's get there.
hacking of 90. Well, we'll be getting in there anytime soon. Bodybuilder, what's up, man? I don't work my pecs often, but when I do, I hit them hard. Good to hear, man. Good to hear. I'm hitting so fast, you can't even see it anymore. Oh, I missed once. Alright, I don't want to talk to Pascal yet, because I'm going to call it an episode before I talk to them. Health hypo and a bandage. Luckily, there were no fatalities in the earthquake. Well, who's this guy? I shouldn't go in here. It's probably sterile, but... What's up, man? Huh? What? <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna call it here. Next episode, we'll start talking to all the people in the station. And we'll try and knock out all the quests in the station before we actually head out. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next episode.